Here we are. We are uh, live now, Rex Thompson. We are. Uh, hey, it's uh, just around uh, 79 right now, partly sunny in central Vermont. Got a nice breeze. It is a beautiful, beautiful day out there. 85, though, later on today. Maybe a stray shower, a thunderstorm possible. Uh, Steve Bogenschutz is with me right now. And Rex Thompson. Uh, Rex, how are you, buddy? First, let, let's start out with Rex. How are you, man? Hey, man, I am really, really good. Mm. I'm trying to share your podcast right now. I'm not mm. lying. Yeah. On our Donnybrook page so all of our fans can see uh, Steve Bogan shoots, mm. who is fighting September 11th. Yeah. Steve, what's going on, man? How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Good, buddy. Uh, it, absolute pleasure to have you. Um you know, I as as Rex will tell you, and, and I'm sure he has. Uh, the last, uh, in addition to the last person you want to tangle with, is is me, right, Rex? What? Are you crazy? Uh, that when it comes to uh, it, see, Steve, he's he's smiling already. When it comes to amateur <laughs> MMA, buddy, I, I I don't know my ass from my elbow. I I really don't. But uh, we welcome you to the show, buddy, and we're glad you're here. Thank you. Hey, tell us, uh, you, you know, I, I was going to ask you what's going on, but I already know what's what's going on with you. You've been in some some pretty hardcore training, am I right? Oh, yeah, I've been trying to get ready. Well, I, I'm not with my old school. That's what uh, bothered me a little bit. Uh, I've been there for nine years, you know, and it's just different training, you know, trying to adjust. It's just hard. What's the old school? Uh, Vermont Martial Arts Academy. Yeah. So what happened? What happened there? Uh, some personal issues. I had to move out. I had to move away from Vermont. And I had to leave everything behind, pretty much. My job, my house. Well, that's too... That's that's really unfortunate. So where, where are you now, Steve? I'm in New York. You're in New York. Yeah, he's yeah. got a good training. He's got a... A uh, good place that he's training with. Aren't you training with Garage MMA and then the other guys over there? Um, aren't you training with a pro right now for your striking? With Cody Murray, uh, didn't Cody Murray just win his pro debut? Yeah, he did. Nice. Seconds. Proud of him. Good for Cody, man. He looked really good. He looked really tough. I mean, he he. I thought he represented Vermont really well. Yeah, um, it was Mike Taylor's debut on his professional fight. I was. Uh, you know, on the weekends with him and pretty much anybody I can. Perfect. Steve, you're you're on a uh, two-win streak right now. You're doing pretty well, bud. Yeah, I had a little fall out there for a while, but uh, I think I was just fighting in the wrong class. So you, you're second ranked of 16 active New England amateur. No, he's number one right now. Middleweights? Oh, middleweights. Yeah, but he's a light heavyweight. He's ranked number one as a light heavyweight. Yeah, that's I got that right here. Uh, that, that's what what is what does that mean, Rex? What what is a uh, a a light heavyweight mean? Ah, uh, two hundred and five pounds. So Steve Bogan shoots the, the what Steve's problem was back in the day because Steve's been a, around for a long time. Steve's a really tough cat. And the reason I know that is because when I grabbed a hold of him, I felt how strong he was. Yeah. He really surprised the hell out of me because I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. Um, I, you know, you always expect to be these, you see these big buff, like duh, duh, guys that lift big weights. You know, you know, those guys are strong. You know, those guys are, you know. But when I grabbed a hold of Steve, I was like, holy shit. I was like, all of a sudden he had underhooks and I couldn't dig them out. <laughs> so, um, so you but he used to, he used to fight a heavyweight. Hmm. Um, and now he moved down classes 205 and 185 and he's he's turned everything around with that that's made a huge difference by fighting in his class because when you get into heavyweights those guys are like six seven 250 260 pounds and shit wow so and he's if for his frame he's a small heavyweight but he's perfect in 205 he's perfect at middleweight uh, Steve what uh what happened the last time uh, you and Rex were tangled up <laughs> oh it was uh i went for i think i went for a guillotine and i think i just made a mistake and he just capitalized on it and i'm not used to like three moves at me at once and he was just all over the arm yeah so and that's what it was it just it was a mistake on on his part where 
I think I think it was like an underhook throw that you were trying, and I countered it, and I ended up in a top position. And it's a hor- that's a horrible position for anybody to be in yeah. to have me yeah. on top. Um, so then from there, I just I use my base to hold everything tight and then work towards a submission from there. But then, but tell him what what went on after that. What was the main yeah, event was, right was, after that? That was Steve. an awesome night for you, man. That was a great night for you. This, that's what really counted. That was just a stupid little grappling match I did with him. Yeah, that's when I figured out how tough he was. To but ask him what happened. What happened in the, that main event a little later, huh? I was training for Rex for, I don't know, about two months, two and a half months. And uh, I was doing a Naga. It was probably like a week before or like two weeks until I was grappling Rex. And I did what I didn't do since high school. I went down to 189. And I, I grappled in two different classes then. I came in second. And uh, Randy ended up calling me Wednesday, uh, like three days before the fight. And he asked me. And I never cut weight before. That was my biggest issue when I was with heavyweight. I love food. <laughs> Don't and, we all? Yeah. <laughs> And I told him I'll get down as close as I could because I was like at the line and I woke up at 188 and he said that was fine to fight. Yep, three pounds. That was cool. Damn, boy. So you got and that. You, up, you, Yeah, go ahead. I ended up, yeah, I ended up, uh, I ended up winning the belt. It was a weird arm bar, like. I wasn't going for that move, but he tried to pick me up at a weird angle. This was it a, a, wasn't it a belly down, Juji? Yeah, it was like he. I was in his side. He had like the scalp hold, you know, the position. Yep. And I was trying to bridge him over so I could be on top. And he tried to like curl me. And instead of fighting it, I just went with him and I ended up in a belly down armbar. Yeah, and that was against what, uh, Dave McNutt? Yeah, Dave McNutt. Yeah. Yeah, that's yep. another tough kid. He's getting ready. He's going to fight for a title over in uh, Watertown, I think. I think he's yeah, fighting over that. there. Tell me about this uh, Gary Cameron fight. Oh, the Gary Cameron Boy, fight. Boy, Gary, Ca- he hits like a mule, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. I found <laughs> that out. Uh, I was just, I was I shouldn't have, you know, stood up with him, but I think he was expecting the takedown, you know, so I try to, like, work my skills and he just caught me with a hook broke my nose and like i wasn't i wasn't gonna give up i worked so long what was going through my mind i worked so long to get where i was and i got punched i bled all the time and i wasn't gonna refuse the loss that was a good fight nobody expected you to win that fight so not only did you win the belt but then you defended the belt so now this is your third fight with a belt, was you that have t- a that belt. Was TKO, wasn't it? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Damn boy. Yeah. Once he got down, once he got because I remember that I was like, ah, oh. when Gary made contact, I was like, holy moly! I was like, he just hit him hard. But then I, I don't know what happened. I, I think Gary's the one that pulled, went to the ground. I think it's a mentality like. It was. It's just like me. I probably shouldn't have stood with Gary. I was trying to like not knock him out, but TKO him from the feet, and yep. he tried to submit me. You know, like being a a good grappler, him defend defeating a grappler on the ground. So it's just a. I think it's just mentality thing. Yeah, it's it's called an ego. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> we all have one, man, and everybody in jujitsu that's ever done one day of jujitsu knows all about that ego from day one white belt when you're in there just trying to kill everybody and survive, to, and it's more or less just to help your ego versus learn. So we all, I, it's just something we, uh, Steve gets it. Yeah, <laughs> Steve, Steve yeah. tell me about September 11th. What we're, um, dude. We're a month away. Yeah, tomorrow makes a month away. Super cool. I so, remember when Rex asked me about it. Like, I was, it was after COVID, you know, I was putting on the weight. I was, I was back up to my old weight, and I don't, I didn't think I was going to, you know, get down this quick, but surprisingly, I didn't have much problem with it. Nice. The weight, 
I, um, like I said, I'm down to my, you know, my fighting weight right now. Tell us about your opponent. Ed Collins. Well, he, I grappled him before. That's, that's oh, I forgot about I that. You did. You did grapple him. Yeah. How'd you uh, do? How'd you do? Well, I lost. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think I did good. I grappled uh, like two tough opponents before that. So you, I think you, I did all right. You know, I don't think I don't think Rex. Correct me if I'm wrong here. I don't think we've ever once had Ed Collins on the Aired Out podcast where he's had something positive to say about another about another opponent. Right. But he did about uh, about Steve. Yeah, he likes Steve. He thinks Steve's a good guy. He doesn't. You know, he doesn't have a beef with him. It just it happens to be. Steve is the number one ranked guy. We need a tough guy to fight for the Donnybrook title. He already has a title. He's number one and number two. So what that fight makes the most perfect sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, Ed already beat up the number five guy. So now we have the number one guy in New England. Ed says he's not. Um, he, he, he's he been on the podcast, Steve. He says he's not. Respectfully, he's not concerned. Oh, wow! No, I, think, I, I, I didn't. I didn't think he would be or so. You know, he got Lucas John in his corner. He's an animal. Yeah, I, I think that gives him confidence. But I, I, I think that's. Uh, I think he's always concerned. Everybody's concerned. Shit can happen. You can get caught in a submission. You could get choked. I mean, I've seen Walter Taylor. He almost choked out Rob Wagner. Remember that? He still talks yeah. about that to that day. I think. Um, Sheldon Cole and them guys, they share the picture every once in a while. I mean, so anything can happen in a fight, especially when you're it's two guys that are trained. And it's not yeah, like right. it's not like this is Steve's debut. Steve's have been around for a long time. This is not his first rodeo. He's fought guys way bigger than Ed Collins. Because Steve used to be in a heavyweight division. Yeah. He's what? fought some big dudes. Remember that Dan Ladd guy you went against? Holy moly, yeah, that guy was a monster. And you held like him for like what, nine minutes. minutes? No, it was like four under it was like four and a half. It felt nine minutes. Felt like <laughs> no, nine. I'm telling you, I think it was like eight minutes or something. I just watched it the other day. Steve, I asked I asked Ed uh this question. I want to ask you. I mean sure. you know, as as someone who uh you know take one look at me and you'll know that uh I'm <laughs> What are you laughing about, Rex? My God, listen to you. You're making fun of me already. And you know that I'm I'm not a, uh, a, a martial artist, but... Really? I could have not tell that. I thought you were a high-level kickboxer I... with them long legs. <laughs> I'm going to kick your ass out of the sidewalk after. Um, but, but that's believable with them legs. But here's the thing. It, it's like, you know... For me, and and I know that we can say the same about about boxers, but it's like how do you how do you beat the shit out of somebody that you 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 know? Uh, I, I don't know if you and Ed are, are considered friends or not, but but you're you know you don't really have this 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 bad deep beef with. I mean, I just I I I can't wrap my head around it. How do you do it? Ed Ed says it's pretty easy. It's it's all about training. Yeah, it's all about training, and I don't know. You're you, when those cage locks, you're not friends. You're, you know, your opponent. Nothing to do with hate, you know. Just like you know, no, it has nothing to do with being friends afterwards. You know, we just respect each other and what we do, and I'm glad that we do it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's just like any like any other sport. You train to see who's the best when you go out and wrestle somebody. Yeah. Or, you know, tennis. I mean, <laughs> you don't have to hate anybody. Rex just... is, it, 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 yeah, Rex is one hell of a tennis player. By the way, it was just <laughs> you've just seen me play. Air that like out that. right now. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen him with his spandex on out on the tennis court, but it's pretty. It's pretty amazing. Shorts. I don't know, but with those uh, spats he had on, or those shorts he had on when we were grappling, showing those legs, <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> Steve, if if you seen Rex lately? I mean, I know you can see him on camera right now, but the guy looks absolutely amazing. No, the last time I saw him actually was uh 
I think I was setting up or putting down a cage with uh, Randy. And uh, I was talking with him. And, uh, you know, going back to what I said before, like, after we grappled, it was like 15, 20 minutes we were sitting, batting, you know, like. But, uh, yeah, I think that's the last time I was, like, before COVID hit, I saw Rex. I was still what, living in Vermont. What what kind of, uh, can you tell us anything about about some of your your coaches that you've had, like um, uh, Dave or, or Chad or, or anybody that's had a, a real positive influence on you some of the t- that you've you've looked up to oh i'd have to say that would be chad because uh when i was growing when i was growing up when i was living in boston i always i always wanted to do this but at the time there wasn't like the school or anything it was just kind of like i saw gloves let's see if i could uh knock you out in the front yard kind of thing you know and uh I went to Vermont and I saw a school and I was actually a guest. Someone actually brought me. I wasn't supposed to stay there. It was supposed to be like, you know, I think it was a week or two week free class. And I just, the way Chad taught, I just, <clears throat> I just kept coming back. And nine years, last October, the last time I was there, nine years, I was there. 19th ranked of 121 active U.S. Northeast amateur middleweights right now that's updated as of about 13 hours ago that's pretty pretty damn cool yeah considering uh you know my, what i'm going through right now and like still like i could still hold that i i just find that awesome and ranked ninth in new york for amateur middleweights very impressive Thank you. Thank you. What have you been doing to get uh, to get in shape for September 11th here in Barrie at the Barrie Auditorium for the Battle in Barrie number five? Well, I, you know, I used to go out, try to go to gyms and stuff and, you know, just field grapple or, you know, spar. I go up to the Jason, uh, I train with Cody, Mike, you know, pretty much anybody. But now, you know. I'm not trying to have any contact, really. It's more like conditioning, you know, shadow boxing, jump roping, running, calisthenics. Cardio. But I have I have been uh, trying to get in a little bit more shape before. You know, I, I'm trying to get that six-pack. I never had it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Rex has found the uh, secret on the six pack. He's uh, he's he's doing really well here. I hardly even recognize this fella next to me now. I know. I have to say, the first time I saw Rex until now, like huge transformation. Congratulations, Rex. Yeah, it's um, I've lost a lot of weight. I'm actually smaller than when we competed. I'm at, I'm going to be competing in the middleweight division at the Kumite in uh, two weeks. Oh. uh... At UFAI, it's actually my wedding anniversary. Brenda oh, was Mike Dur- so excited Mike- to have me sign up for the Kumite on our wedding anniversary. She just asked me. She's like, "Hey, what are we doing this year for the wedding anniversary? We heading back to the casino? We gonna take that cruise?" I was like, "Absolutely not, baby. That's the weekend of the Kumite." She was like, "Perfect, Rex. You are the perfect husband." All you guys hear that? That's how you keep your yeah, wife around. Yeah. Steve, what else, what else do you do? What what? Uh... What what turns you knobs? What what else do you do in life? Uh well right now uh I just got a job. So uh, you know, I'm trying to you know, set in out here, trying to get everything back. You know, that's it's kinda it's kinda hard sometimes to deal with both, you know. I'm trying to always be positive and if this this always this saved me you know uh it got me out of like drinking i used to be really bad with that you know other substance yeah it was just this you know having a routine and it's something that no one else could you know take away from you yeah it's always with you it seems to be uh 
it, it seems to be a constant uh, among the amateur MMA fighters that I've met is that uh, they absolutely rely on this. And, and in some cases, almost have become borderline addicted to, to <laughs> really. I, I'm I mean, absolutely addicted uh, to it. I know you that. are. I know you are. And, My and doctor actually told me yesterday, he was like, do you think you could find something that would not hurt your body as much? <laughs> I was like, I don't know, Doc. Whiskey and cocaine. Yeah, it's like, yeah. that's definitely not safer for me. Right. But 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 you 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 guys are uh, you guys. Some of you really uh, need this this outlet to to get through. I think life. a lot of it is who you surround yourself with. So absolutely. Uh, I surround myself from people from the gym, so I want to be at the gym all the time. Yeah. So, it, like, with Steve training with Cody, Cody just won a huge fight, which was on UFC Fight Pass on CES. So by him surrounding himself by people like that that are positive to his life, that's just a positive energy. It's It, it relates. If you hang out with a bunch of people smoking crack, mm. doing pills, mm. sh- booting heroin, mm. guess what you're going to be doing? Yeah. So you, it, I, I think it has more to do with who you surround yourself with in your sure, life sure. and what kind of energy you have in your life. Steve, have you had a chance to to work at all with with Lucas John? Uh no, I haven't. Uh, besides training, no, I ha- I haven't. I would love to. He lives quite a far a ways away. Yeah. yeah. What's what what's next for you beyond? Beyond September 11th, Steve. Well, when I talked to Rick, uh, you know, uh, he said, uh, you know, being the number one guy fighting him, uh, we were talking about a pro debut. Absolutely, debut. because Steve's a, you know, he's been a New England fighter around here. He has a ton of fights. Why wouldn't I want him to fight a, a pro fight on our card? Absolutely. Yeah. This is why this was the whole point of sanctioning and stuff was so that our local guys could get recognized on the pro circuit. What would that what would that look like for you, Steve? Oh, uh, that look uh I would have to definitely uh make a major adjustment, you know, take this a little bit more serious. Drop down 170, murder people. Probably, yeah, you know how big that. you would be at 170 as a pro? I mean, are we are we talking about uh, like something that might be a year out, Rex? Oh, I, it it all depends on how his weight cuts. If he stays with his uh you know, his his weight plan, if he doesn't if he goes and then fights, what happens is a lot of fighters they will go, they'll go and they'll win a fight, they'll lose a fight, or whatever it is. They just, they go and they fight, and then they're like, all right, I'm not in fight camp anymore, bring on the large pizzas. Oh, boom, yeah. boom, yeah. boom. I'm the same way. That's why I'm always putting myself, I'm like, all right, I got to find something to go after. So that's why I'm going after Worlds. So I can, I can make myself wow. go train six days this week, four days that week, six days, and keep to this because I have a goal. I have something to go after. If not, I'm like, eh, do I really need to go to Monday class? I've been over half guard before. Maybe I could just stay home and eat a whole bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken. Because I like yeah. Kentucky Fried Chicken. Could you do it? Could, I could absolutely you? could smash a 16-piece Kentucky Fried Chicken original recipe. I would put Daniel Cormier to shame. He's got his Popeyes. I'd have my KFC. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so that's why I do these things. That's why I try to go for, you know, whether it be a tournament. Even if I take, even if I'm doing a, a local grappling tournament, I treat it the same way. I do a, I do a whole camp for it. Make sure that I'm prepared for it, because it's not only me, but that's that's our school. Yeah. That we're going, well, you know, I'm representing. Everybody knows that I train at Granite City MMA under Lucas. I mean, I only do their jujitsu. I don't, but everybody knows that. So if I go in there just sloppy, missed a bunch of classes and representing the school, I look like an ass and I make the school look like an ass. So if somebody beats me at one of them tournaments, like TJ George, TJ George, you know, message me, yada, yada, yada. And I, and, like I said to TJ, dude, if you beat me, I feel like I'm a legit jujitsu guy. I train 
all the time because I want to get better. I'm obsessed with it, and I, I just love learning it. So I if you beat me, you beat you, you beat a legit jujitsu. I'll give you that. I don't care. Doesn't bother me. Well, it is what it is. You, you won. But they're not gonna somebody's not gonna beat me because they outworked me. Um they're not gonna be like, Well, I did six days a week and I did two days a week and beat you. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? No oh, one's yeah. no I'm not gonna be like, All right, I got beat because I fucking train two days a week. No. Right. I got beat because you're better than me. Plain and simple. Good yeah. for you, man. I'll yeah. be back. <laughs> we'll yeah. try this again. <laughs> is, 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 Steve, do you do you do you share do you share that attitude? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's uh you know, you could lie to anybody else, you can't lie to yourself. And if you you could even feel it, you don't even have to tell yourself that, you know. Yep. You know, you absolutely know. When you go and you roll with somebody, I don't care if there's a ref there or not, you know who had the advantage. Whether it looked like yep. from somebody else, anybody standing on the outside, you know. You know in your mind. I had it happen to me. I was up at um, UFAI, and I was rolling with this brown belt. felt great. I was like, oh, I'm a fucking madman, you know? I go up there a couple days later. This blue belt works me to fuck over. Yes, I was able to defend myself. I looked really cool, and probably not one person knew that that guy was beating my ass. But I was like, oh, my God, this guy is so strong. Really? He's so tight for a blue belt. He had he really tight wedges and stuff. So then I was like, ah, oh, I can't let that guy on top of me. And then I went there, and there was a purple belt, and he was the same size as me. And he was able to pin me. I was able to defend, but he was able to pin me. So you know, you know. So then I was instantly I was like, okay, my problem, what I have is everybody at the gym is smaller than me. So I've never had a pro I don't have problems getting out from underneath people, and I forgot that. So now I'm back to laying on the mat, having the biggest dude in the gym, uh, whatever gym I'm at, whether I'm at Montpelier Martial Arts, whether I'm at UFAI or uh, I'm at Granite City, I lay on my back. Take a deep breath and get ready for an ass whooping. So I'll have the biggest guy sit on my chest, either mount me or side control, and I'll start from that position because I feel like that was starting to become a weakness. Wow. So that's how I, I do it. Any method to the madness for you, Steve? Uh, yeah, I have to say this probably the same thing as Rex. You know, I had a little, uh, holes in my when I was on bottom too because I, wa I was the biggest guy in the class at Vermont Martial Arts Academy that's why I had a problem so when someone yep. was on top of me I didn't know what to do because I was always you know getting out so I thought I was doing good but in reality it was I wasn't I was just maintaining my weight but it wasn't if they were like bigger than me that's why I had decided to go down so that's one of the biggest problems we have here in Vermont, um, why it's hard to compete with guys from gyms from other states and stuff like that. So there's a there's a gym down in Connecticut, and it's called Soulcraft BJJ. I met the instructor, super cool guy. Uh, they're down the lineage of Holes Gracie. But they have 300 students at one gym. So and there's probably 10 gyms within 20 miles. So in, just in that one gym, if you belong to that one gym, you can roll with someone different. You can do 25 rounds and never roll with the same person. So hmm. our gyms are not that big. You get 20, even it, the big gyms have 40 people in them, 30 people. Not everybody stays in rolls. It's different. So we have to, like, I have to travel around. So Monday, I go to Granite City. Tuesday, I go to UFAI. Wednesday, I'm back to Granite City. Thursday, I go to Montpelier Martial Arts. Friday, I'm back up with uh, Crew Ballard doing private lessons. Me and Lucas, where me and Lucas go up in, with Crew Ballard and do Japanese Jiu Jitsu. Um, and then Saturday, we do open mat back at. So we, I have to travel around to these places to get that kind of experience that the guys in the cities and other states have because sure. that's hard when you live in a small area, especially where Steve was at his time. So that's what makes Steve actually makes Steve good is because he came from this small place. He didn't have a lot of training partners. It wasn't 
it, it was it was hard, and he still made a go of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Once he realized his weight, it was like. So I really mm. believe that that Steve is a talented guy. I think that um, as his weight cuts go, you're going to see a tougher and tougher. By the time he goes pro at 170, right, right, Steve. I'm going to try. <laughs> 185 max, but I say 170, man. I, I could see you murdering people at 170 pounds. So, I mean, because if I competed, if I if I I took it serious, I'm a 145-pound guy. I'm a 155-pound guy yeah. in reality. That's, my, that's the frame of my body. Steve, I'm... Um, uh, Finally, I, you know, I, I just want to ask you, and I, I'm always so curious about this with with you guys, you all you f fighters, male, female, doesn't matter. Your support system is uh, is something that I'm I'm always wondering about with with these fighters, whether they have one in place, whether it's family, friends, husband, wife, whoever it may be. Um, pretty much know Rex's well. But uh, what about what about yours? What, what, what kind of support system do you have in place? Oh, the support system. Uh, well, I found out that uh, I can't rely on people that I used to. So uh, I'm trying to. I'm in the process of creating a new. Uh, Justin been there for me. Cody's been there for me. Uh, Mike, everybody I trained with. Uh, so that's your support my, system. That's it. Those yeah, are your guys. Yeah. Those guys, they've been there for me, you know, and even it was kind of like I would I would contact one of them and it was just nothing. It was something like you didn't have to train, you know. So, so I have to say them. Huh. Any other uh, comments, questions for Steve as we wrap up? No, sir. Other than I'm excited to see it, I think it's yeah. going to be an I think it's an incredible show. Um, he's the co-main event, him yeah. and Ed. Yeah. What, what, do you, what do you say? Should we give away some tickets? Oh shit! Yeah, we should. Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I don't want to suggest you know that we give away tickets. You know, something that yeah, is your, Do we got any? It's your business. It's your company. You know, I'm just saying. That yeah, nice. You just put me right on the spot and be like, "Oh my god, well, you cheap bastard! You don't see have how we, to give away any free tickets." But see, see how we do here. that, Steve. You see how we do that? Yeah. Hey, that. Um, just to let the the viewers know, because I know Steve's over in New York and he probably has a lot of fans over in New York. Mm. This show, we also have a pay per view. Uh, if you purchase it now, it's only nineteen ninety nine for the pre buy. But as we get closer to the show, it's going to be twenty nine bucks. So if you can't make it to the show and you still want to watch Steve fight, um, just get on there, click on there, and um, make sure you let them know when you order that which fighter you're you're rooting for, so that Steve can get credits for those pay per views. All right. Yeah, please. Let's not. Well, this is how this is how we track all this stuff, right. so that when Steve turns pro, we know what kind of um, offers to make him to fight for us. Sure. You know, if he if he brings in a shit ton of pay per view guys in New York or you know a bunch of tickets, of course you you want people like that as right. your pro guys, but you also want local guys. Yeah. So that's what my job as a promoter is to promote Steve. Steve's job is to train and yeah. put on a good fight. Right. He puts on a good fight. That's all he's got to do. Yeah. I can promote him. Right. Go to Donnie Brook Fight Promotions. Uh, Absolutely. Facebook page is is a great. I mean, everyone should be there. Uh, yes. Follow the Facebook page and follow Aired Out because we're going to be doing a media event down at Gusto's. We got the um, Ring Girls. The yeah. two Ring Girls are going to be there, and we're going to have some guys hitting some mats, some pads, and you can meet some of the local fighters. What's the date on that? We don't have a date yet. Okay. Um, I'm waiting for the uniforms to come in for the Ring Girls, and then we'll set the date. All right. Wonderful. It'll uh, be a Thursday, Friday night. It, yeah. So... Keep watching the Aired Out page. Keep watching the We Donnie should drink whiskey and make asses out oh of ourselves God. on Facebook Live. Again? We absolutely should. Again. It would be hilarious. Steve, the last time I went out to Gusto's <laughs> with uh, with Rex, it was an experience that uh, I, I think has really given me a little bit of post-traumatic stress. 
uh, <laughs> watching him uh, dance and, uh, you know, other physical gyrations. Uh, it was it, interesting. I love dancing, J.D., especially when I'm drinking. Oh, my God. <laughs> JD was starting fights with the biggest dudes in the whole bar. Oh, yeah. Those yeah. three guys were enormous. They were going to kill us. Yeah. I said, I think I said to you, uh, yeah, Rex, I, I just, you know, I, I just go for the ankles. And then you were calling me an ankle biter. It was a horrible, <laughs> just, it shouldn't have happened. Anyway, um, <laughs> what a great night that was. I laughed so freaking hard. Uh, you, you'll, you'll let us know when we're going to be there. Yes. Um, but keep watching the Donnybrook Fight Promotion Facebook yep. page. Uh, get your tickets right through that Facebook page as well. Yes. All also, right. we're going to be hiring staff for okay. the show that night. If yeah. you uh, would like to work for us, yeah. please contact me on Facebook. Uh, we have to we hire an entire staff to to watch the doors, to wrangle the fighters, get the fighters up and ready. Okay. So I have lots of positions. And um, and you and I are going to be emceeing, right? Oh hell yeah! All right. It's going to be great. Yeah, yeah. and I, I just asked William Knight also from the UFC. I told him I'd give him a table if he wanted to come up. Wonderful. We'd give him a table and a room. Wonderful. Super good dude. I've met him a few times. and okay. William, Yeah, just a really good dude. That's great. That's great. Uh, l let's give away a pair of tickets, Rex. Right, uh, l let's do it right now. How, how should we do this? Should we throw a little trivia? What do you want to do? Uh, um, I don't know about the trivia. All right. We got we to gotta pick someone to give it. How are we going to pick somebody to give it away? Well, I mean, we've got uh, live interaction, right? Here. Oh, yeah. I want to give it to somebody that's watching. Somebody that's actually watching. You're Only people eligible for these tickets are the people watching. All right. All right. How many people you? How many people do we have watching? Well, it's it's tough to it's tough to say. Okay. Right now, anybody? Let's make a I've comment got, if you're on here. I've got different screens up. Um, oh. I mean, obviously, Steve Renault. He he can't. I mean, there you go. No, Steve's going to be there. Daryl Stone. Who? Oh, wait a minute. Why do I know Daryl Stone? Daryl Stone. Is he related to Keith Stone? I don't know. He'll, <laughs> he'll tell you. Uh, there's, uh, I'm seeing some names here. Uh, Dan Ladd. Oh, who, yes. Yes, Dan Ladd. He's the one that grappled against um, Steve Bogenschutz. He always promises to come and watch the show. But he he, never he says uh, Steve Bogenschutz 2024. That's what he just posted right there. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Daryl saying he won them last year. Oh, well, that disqualifies uh, you, Daryl. Really? <laughs> anyway, Daryl. Daryl, really? You know, Come on. somebody doesn't give me a good reason to give them a ticket. I'm going to donate them to the VFW so they can raffle them off. Did I tell you the VFW is going to be there September 11th? No. With Vicky. Yeah, we're going to have the, the, the it's September 11th. Oh, Why well, wouldn't true. we have yeah, true. the VF, our local VFW yeah. is going to do the 50-50 raffle Wonderful. there. So perfect. Wonderful. And whatever else we can do for them. All right. Gostos will be there. Oh, wait till you see the uniforms for the waitresses. Yeah. They're perfect. Well, I, you see, I have to, I have to, be, I, I, I have to hesitate a little bit when I comment on that because one of them is 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 your 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 daughter, and I, I just no, I, she's not. Oh, I just saw the pictures on the on the. Oh yes, so those were our little crop tops that we ordered. Yeah, I can't say, I can't say. Anything. Those are yeah, you better not you, because your daughter will be eighteen soon. Well, this is true. <laughs> she, she's only six, but then you and I will get fighting, and then the, the blood, and that's just not good. I know. You know, I, we don't want that. And you still have my rifles. Um, you, d <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I don't uh, have any guns. I take that back. Daryl says I fought on the same card as as Steve against Paul Valente. Oh yes, yeah. that's why I remember. Yeah. Uh, so so what should we do? I, I think we should post up some kind of, you know, some kind of trivia. About Donnie Brook fight promotion. I mean, you guys are kicking ass. This is Battle and Barry Five, which has been around here for now. Rex is texting right now, Steve. Yes, by the way, I, I, I am. I am so sorry because <laughs> what a lot of people don't know is I own Donnie Brook. I I'm a part owner of Donnie Brook. Uh, I have my construction company going on with four jobs going on right now. I'm here at this podcast. I'm still working. This is the shit I do. I'm crazy like that. <laughs> And I will be crashed out by nine o'clock. All right, listen. I'm gonna write the. I'm gonna write the question. We'll post it up here, and we'll get a winner of some tickets here in a little bit. But I, I want to kind of make people work for oh. it a little bit. Oh. Okay. This is something. 
this is very, very specific. Anybody that had ever been to my shows, what kind of hairdo did the little ring boy have at our shows? Can I, can I, can I say his name? I think it was Mason. Right? Mason, yes, Mason. I couldn't remember his name. Mason. What did what did kind of hairdo did Mason have? It's a very specific hairdo. All right, that's perfect. Yes, that's a perfect question. So the first person that gets it right, he's got a pair of tickets. September 11th, Battle and Barry Five, Barry Auditorium. Be there. Yeah, get, absolutely. Get your tickets, and we don't want to hear any you cry baby and bullshit that you 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 waited too long and you didn't get your tickets in time. Yeah, because the front row is almost sold out. I think there's only 10 tickets left for the front row. The second row is going right away. Um, so we have the third row and the general admission at this. All right. So the the, the tables are also sold out right now. Um, wow. Yeah. I think people want to get out. They're ready. Of course they do. Of course they do. And it's a great show. Yeah. It can be amazing. Steve, thank you so much for spending some time with us, buddy. We, we appreciate it very much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Keep training hard. We'll see you on September 11th. Stay positive, buddy. Thank you. See you later, guys. What a cool dude, huh? Yeah. I like that guy. Yeah, he's a really good, good kid, man. All right. Wow. Does anybody Has anybody figured it out? No. We're asking you, uh, little Mason. I don't know. He's like seven. Yeah. He's like seven or yeah, eight years old. Yeah, he used to old. train with us. Uh, and he, he gets in the ring. Uh, what, what kind of hair has he had? Do you want me to give him a hint? Uh, you, you, you. It's the same hairdo as the referee. The it's the guy. same hairstyle yeah. as the referee. Well, that's true. That's true. So if you can, if you can, <laughs> uh, Daryl got it. Daryl got it. Darryl All got right. It. A mohawk. Yes, he's absolutely right. Mason and the referee both had mohawks. Mason was a lot bigger with his mohawk. Daryl, just make sure you bring somebody with you that's really going to love this. I mean, this is yeah, crazy. especially something that's never been to one. Yeah, um, I highly encourage it. If you've never been to one and you're afraid to spend the money to go to your very first one, yeah. contact me direct. I mean, look at me for an example. I mean, I had never been to anything boxing match, nothing. And and I went and I just loved it. it yeah, there's so just like, once you go to one, it's crazy. I was hooked the very first time I was like, oh, my God. So I, I as a, once we started that, that was one way we did our we do our marketing, is we try to get people that have never been and we give them a free ticket yeah. because it's it's like a drug, man. Yeah. The first one's free. After that, you got to pay for it. That's right. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Rex Thompson, uh, thanks, buddy. Thank hey, you so much. No problem. I got to get back to the job. Sorry. And thank you for sponsoring us. Uh, Barslow Construction and Granite City MMA are just two of them. And by God, we love them. Uh, Sherilyn wants to talk with you. Barslow Construction talk about uh, premium colors for the house. Emsley's Floors and Gifts, K&W Tire, Gothier's Quality Grounds and Maintenance, Fontaine Forestry and Millwork, Wright Electric. Chris Wright was just here a little while ago. Donnybrook Fight Promotion, Barry Montpelier Times, Argus, Vermont Custom Woodworking, Aeromed Essentials, RetirementVT.com, and FGB Theaters. We're going to be with uh, Tracy Lewis from the Barry Partnership tomorrow. What's that? My motorcycle in the back. Hey, I need to talk to her. I've been tagging her in all my posts because I think it's very important yeah. that the people of Barry know about this show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll give you a, her contact here in just a second. All right? Thanks, Rex. <laughs> we'll catch you again uh, tomorrow morning right here on Air Now.